Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. As promised today, this is part two. Um, what we're going to do is uh, looking at setting up the end float, as said in the workshop manual, by using a dial gauge. What I'd like to make you aware of is the fact that there is a development and things change through the ages. Uh, item 21 says slacken back the uh, nut to obtain an end float of 0.05 to 0.1 of a millimetre. Now this is on the older Defenders. Looking at the Land Rover Discovery, which is in the 90s, it will say to tighten up to 4 newton meters, and this will give you an end float of the bearing of 0.01 of a millimeter. And later still, we're looking at the 300 TDI Discovery Workshop Manual, which just tells you to do it up at 10 newton meters with no end float whatsoever. However, we always do have an issue with our Land Rovers, don't we? Because sometimes we'll have an axle which does not belong to the original vehicle. Also recommend that you have a workshop manual for your vehicle so you know you have the data at hand because I can't give you all of this out because of the varying types of axles there are. As I explained in earlier tutorials, this is end float. Okay, it's not a preload and this is adjustable by tightening up a nut. This is your adjuster nut. The more you tighten it up, the less end float you have. In part one, I showed you how we could achieve a certain setting by using a gauge meter, like so, to get four newton meters. This tool, however, is not available to everybody. A good option is to use a dial gauge, and this will give you a very accurate reading. And I'd advise getting one of these if you're going into rebuilding your Land Rover, because you'll need it. This tutorial I'm going to show you how to set the end float up on your hub, which is quite easy to do. And in following tutorials I'm going to show you how to set up the end float on your CV shaft so it's not excessive. That will be the end float that you have to get rid of on this part here on your axle. And in the same vicinity of the hub and the CV shaft, you also have the brake disc, which you can check run out on, which is quite handy to check this before you put your caliper on, etc., and find out that your brake pedal is pulsing. Okay, so this is quite vital. Okay, so the dial gauge itself will come to increments of 0.01 of a millimeter, which is about that much. This is what we need to measure in, and the end float that we're going to set up will be exactly this. So it will be 0 0.010 of a millimetre, for instance, okay? Well, being a little bit sloppy, even we're just looking at the movement here, this is about 0 0.05 of a millimetre movement on the hub. And how we achieve this is to move the hub and have a reference point where the stylus is touching. So, first of all, I'm going to show you that we have a dial gauge with a magnetic base, which you can buy for about £35. Okay, this is quite handy. You have the base and the gauge itself. At some point, you'll also need a bolt-on bracket like this. This is available from Paddock. And this bracket itself is quite handy. It fits a standard dial gauge. There are different types slots in there okay you don't need to crush that up too tight in that hole and it will do the job just nicely for measuring and uh, setting the end float on the hub you'll need to bolt it to the hub and then have the stylus in a loaded position onto the adjuster nut when i mean loaded i mean that it needs to, the stylus needs to be pushed in so it will counteract the minus movement as well as the plus movement okay so it'll be like this okay you also, as a reference, can set the dial gauge to zero once it's loaded, so you can then see what movement there is minus or plus from zero. Okay, so I'm all set up here, and I'm getting the hub, and I'm moving it backwards and forwards, and you can see the amount of movement, which, to be honest with you, is not very much. I'll show you again. That's actually quite excessive there. Okay. Now... It's a matter of winding the nut up a little bit more, resetting your gauge so it's loaded and put to zero once more, and then try again. Ultimately, you'll be trying to get the needle to match the readings and the data that are given to you in the workshop manual. And on this one here, which was 0 0.01, 
I have got it just right, just here. Okay, with maybe a gnat's cock over, but it doesn't matter about that. Well, I hope this has given you an insight into using a dial gauge and gaining some confidence in using accurate measuring machines. This is important more for things like gearboxes and for engine rebuilds, so keep this in mind. Practice and do things better.